Good evening YouTube. How are you this evening? I am pretty good. Uh, it is Monday and of course I'm here in North Little Rock and it's about 6.15 in the evening. And I just got back from uh, eating dinner with a couple of the other trainers who were in class and uh, today was a, a pretty good day <clears throat> um, all around. Uh, you know how people are, they're kind of leery about talking about their feelings and uh, getting in touch with themselves kind of thing. And that was uh, kind of the, the, the bulk gist of today. Um, started off at 8 o'clock this morning and uh, we uh, jumped right into it talking about our homework uh, from yesterday. Uh, as I told you, the homework was uh, dealing with a piece of uh, part 391 of the FMCSR and that particular part was comprehension and uh, language skills using the English language. Uh, it is a federal regulation that you must be able to communicate in English, both reading and writing and verbally to understand and to speak the language in order to, in order to hold a uh, commercial vehicle uh, driver's license. That's a federal regulation. <clears throat> Unfortunately, a lot of companies uh, they don't adhere to it. A lot of states don't adhere to it either. I mean, they test in Spanish and other languages and, uh, that kind of defeats the purpose of having regulation. Maverick takes that regulation into, into heart. Uh, if you're not able to communicate in the English language effectively here in training or out on the road, unfortunately, uh, they, we have to part ways uh, with those people. Uh, the other part of our homework was of course comfort zone and I guess from my message uh, yesterday in my blog I really didn't have a real grasp good grasp of what uh, Kurt was wanting us to talk about um, it was to list four things that put us in our comfort zone four things that take us out of our comfort zone it wasn't things or ideas but it was generalizations things like family security um, you know health you know things like that that put that they can put you in and the same things that can put you in your happy space or inside your comfort zone can take you out of your comfort zone if for example if you have a good family home life your family can be a good center for you to be in your comfort zone but if there's problems inside your family then that will put you outside your comfort zone and make your communications and issues in your life you know cause problems or give challenges, I should say. We have a whole list of things, and there's tons and tons of stuff. We came up with a list of 26 items, and I'm not going to list them all off, but there, there are many, many things. Um, we talked about that for most of the morning, and then uh, dealing with uh, how we communicate within within our within our comfort zone, how to deal with situations to keep us in our comfort zone, how to react and to um, to deal with situations relating to when our student is not in their comfort zone. Because it is a given that someone who's never come into this industry before, and every truck driver, um, without exception, can relate to this, is that when you come into this industry, it is a completely different change from what you've done with doing before. Even if trucking is all you've ever known, because uh, your whole family truck, you started trucking as a little kid, you, know, you first got behind the wheel of a tractor you know, at 16 or whatever. Um, coming into this type of industry over the road, sleeping in a truck, dealing with all these things, and being away from home is a huge, huge change, and it puts people out of their comfort zone. So when a student comes into the trainer truck, the trainer has to be able to deal with that and help that person into some semblance of a comfort zone, or at least help mitigate their inability to be in their comfort zone. Uh, after we dealt with that, we had a lunch and then uh, moved on to uh, conflict and conflict management. Uh, what are the causes of conflict? You know, basically, a conflict is a disagreement between two people. This is what we're talking about conflict between people. And how to deal with those situations, how to diffuse the conflict, how to even get it, get it, get, you know, resolve the conflict before it ever starts because the best resolution to a conflict is not to have one in the first place. You know, conflict it happens in everyone's lives, but if you can live your life in a certain way, and I had this problem, I'm real, I have a real short fuse. 
It's taken me years of working on it. It's about that long now. And for a long time, it was about that long. <laughs> so, dealing with those issues and how to resolve it, because, you know, at the root of every conflict, there's a situation. At the root of every situation, there's a root issue that caused or exacerbates the problem. So what you have to do is you have to work towards finding the root issue and then finding a solution, putting that solution into place, and then following up to understand, uh, you know, and get it, get it resolved, preferably before the actual conflict ever starts. And we spent most of the afternoon working on that conflict uh, resolution. And through that, we also talked about communication, how to communicate effectively. Most people know, you know, there's communication is a two-way street between one, you know, two people. But there's really three elements to communication. The first one is listening. If you can't listen, then you're not going to be able to to work towards resolving issues before they come could become conflicts or challenges. I should say we don't like the word issues. <clears throat> There's also verbal communication, talking, such as I'm doing. You know, I'm communicating to you my experiences here at MIT through my blogs. I communicate what it's like to be a driver through all the frustrations and everything that I go through. Okay, um, I have a tendency to get very frustrated, so I have a tendency to to vocalize those things. And the third part of communication is nonverbal communication, which is you know, body language, talking. I talk with my hands a lot. Um, you know, when I think I'm doing it too much, I have a tendency to hold my hands, but I still fidget, you know? Everybody has their own their own body language, but you can also tell a lot more, you know, whether or not someone's being guarded or protecting themselves, or they're wide open to information, you know, or, or whether they're actually paying attention to you by what their eyes are doing, facial facial expressions, stuff like that. Uh, communication between the trainer and the student is huge. We need to be able to ensure that we are conveying to the information to the student uh, that they need to know, and we need to be able to listen to what the student is communicating to us, either verbally, non-verbally. You know, listen to them and understand what they're going through and their their own personal uh, challenges. Once it was all said and done, we wrapped up the afternoon uh, with some role play. Uh, one person playing the teacher. And yeah, one of my other, these clowns out here. And this guy's going to be a trainer. <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 these guys are here, they all know, so they'll try to photobomb me when he can. And he succeeded. So, uh, we need to be able to, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, <laughs> role play. We role played out some situations, scenarios where one person was the student, and one person was the trainer, and we worked through a couple of different scenarios on how to deal with, you know, certain situations and things like that. Graded people on their reactions and how they handled stuff. So that's where we stand. Tomorrow we're going to continue that, and we're also going to move into SDI, um, you know, student training information. Uh, and continue with the program. Today's video is not as long because most of what we did was all was drawn out throughout the day. We didn't cover a ton of material. We really only covered those three subjects: comfort zones, and you know, conflict management, and communication. Uh, tomorrow we'll be covering even more stuff. We did talk to, as well today about um, how we deal with uh, the students while we're on home time, and uh, I'll, I'll get more into that later. But basically, when I'm at home. The student can't stay in the truck, so what I'll be doing is I'll be checking into my, them into a hotel near where I park the truck or near my house. Since where I park my truck is not the greatest part of town uh, in general, I found uh, two hotels near my home that have access to laundry facilities, shopping, and food for the students to stay at uh, while I'm on my home. And that, and that will help. Hopefully, most of the time, I will get students that live inside the DFW area and we can make arrangements just so they can go home and not have to worry about a hotel. But it's one of those things that I had to get logistically worked out before I can actually take any students. So, um, that's pretty much it for the day. It was a really good day. It's a nice day. Still here in Little Rock. It's getting a little cloudy. We're supposed to have maybe have a little bit of rain tonight. Uh, I've already eaten dinner, so I'm going to pop inside and get on the internet and answer some of y'all's questions that I've gotten in email over the last couple of days. So until we speak tomorrow, keep the shiny side up, 73s, and you have a good evening. Bye.